Well, it's that time of year, right? I mean, we're inching up on summer. We're getting into like pre-football for Nebraska. Pre-football for Nebraska where everyone's excited. We're going to go 10 and 2, 10 and 3 because we're going to end up losing in the Big Ten championship and then 10 and 4 because we're going to lose in the bowl game. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's miracle day stuff is is what nebraska fans go into yeah are you hearing uh, some more some more chatter out there on the whole interweb i mean man like on on the how, how, how many, aol yeah on on aol messenger and i was also on some msn messenger just because mm. you know i had it and they now have the bubbles, so mm -hmm. kind of like iPhone, which is great. You just know when people are typing. Um, yeah, I, I keep hearing, like, people are really in belief that we're going to win the national title. That's a little much, but I'm saying, like, they think seven and five, six and six is, like, guaranteed. I, on the other hand, don't think it's guaranteed. I'm scratching my head a little because I am just clueless. Mm -hmm. Since you're a Lincolnite, you're a Huskerite, whatever it is, I am not. I'm not even close. I never got, I didn't even get asked to walk on. What on earth is going on there? I don't know, man. Um, I, I mean, I, mean I wouldn't have went there if I was asked to walk on. I would not have. But I just was, I still didn't get asked. Go ahead. Well, the state of affairs now, if I would have been, oh God, this is going to be terrible to say, but no, say it. This is going to be worthy. Dallin, be ready. <laughs> if I was, uh, if I was a high school kid now and Nebraska offered me, I'm not going there. No chance. I'm going to Iowa or Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, so you said six and six and seven and five are guaranteed. I mean, you hear uh, chatter of people saying like, "Oh, there's yeah. someone that said eight and four. and I was, and then I then I got my eyes. I rubbed my eyes so bad I turned into pink guy on both eyes because I was like, "What the heck is that? Like, are you delusional? Yeah, what was circus some, were you at? Yeah, hey, yeah. what was it? Somebody that works for for the university that was saying that? <laughs> it was actually a clown. An actual cloud. There you go. Clouds are weird too, by the way. Oh, they don't. I can't trust them. No, never trust a clown. <laughs> yeah. So you say six and six and seven and five guaranteed, or what? What you heard from somebody? Well, I mean, I could uh, be making all this up too, but that is the absolute best I see us going. Is seven and five, the absolute best I see us going. And you know what's crazy about that is. But after last year, we'd be so happy to have that record. But it's still unacceptable. So unacceptable for Nebraska football. If we go seven and five. This staff, not one person, gets a 20 year extension. I mean, you see thousand percent chance of that. You you see the contracts that the University of Nebraska have put out for all their athletic teams. Yeah, it's, I mean it's sick. It's like everything's guaranteed it's a lifetime contract you get your name on the walls like a lot of cool stuff very beneficial yeah when are we going to change that's your the, school when, when are we going to change tom osborne field to, to scott frost field i think I'm not sure it's week three <laughs> no i look i mean <laughs> Yeah, we can win more games than we did last year. And we should win more games than we did last year. Our schedule is a joke this this year. And by the way, this is nothing against Scott Frost. Like, this is – we're talking about the fans and the hype right now. Hopefully, they go 6-6 six and six or 7-5. and five. I'm just – I don't – I've done the research, obviously. Mm -hmm. I just don't – I don't – I don't know who's fact-checking to get us to six and six or seven and five <laughs> who's facts who's fact checking the, mar the marketing department one of those social yeah. media things well yeah 
Yeah, one of those Man. social media. Yeah, one of those little polls on social media. Hey, yeah, one of those and then it's only sent, and it's only sent out to Nebraska fans only that signed like, up for that one person. Yeah, I'm just like it's hard. I love living in the state of Nebraska, greatest of all time, Scott. I know you loved your time here. Love I it. Know, I know you want to come back, but that's beside Someday. the point. That's beside the point. But we yeah. have a lot of irrationality. How do they think our personnel is going to be better? I, I thought last year our personnel was was going to be garbage, and I was wrong on it. They were pretty nailed. We were both wrong on it. I, I was right there with you. Yeah, and our personnel on the defensive side was incredible. Maybe through free agency. And we lost but, most of them. Yeah, but maybe through college free agency, that's how we're getting it. Yeah, true, true. Uh, maybe we, we have some splash signings here that make a big old difference. I haven't seen them yet. I haven't seen anybody come through the transfer portal that I'm like, yes, yes, it's perfect. Well, supposedly they got someone, some defensive end or linebacker, defensive player. Who, like, I really don't care. But, like, there was we spent a lot of money on, and we'll see if he works out, though. Like, I mean, it's a transfer. It's a one and done, right? So, like, it's just hard to – it's hard to say, man. I'm just, like – what on earth are we talking about? We lost dogs on defense. Yeah. Our, we lost every playmaker uh, the, the, on defense is gone, except for that. Uh, who's that number 44? Is that Garrett Nelson or? Yeah. yeah. He, and, I, and he's, and he's a, he's a workhorse. He'll, 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 he'll yeah. do everything he can. He, he's solid, but he can't do it alone. But every playmaker at the linebacker level and the DB level gone, every other playmaker on the defensive line gone. And and Garrett Garrett Nelson, I think he's a stud, an absolute stud. But he was also benefiting from having other studs on the D-line with him. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like they're asking Garrett. So say you're just in a big art gallery and there's a huge, huge painting. And it's basically like they said, hang it up alone. Mm-hmm. You can't, you can't, because you can't, you can't balance it. You can't do whatever this, this, when it all comes down, Nebraska's football seasons comes, comes down to a painting. And Garrett Nelson's trying to hold it up. Mm-hmm. Van Gogh. Yeah. Now Michelangelo. You flip, now you flip over to the offensive side. Kimo Sabi. We lost our only playmaker on the O-line. Our receiving yeah, core may be better. Some people didn't think he was that great. Oh, second round. The NFL thought he was good. Yeah. You know what? I, I would have taken second round when I got drafted. That would have been pretty sweet. Yeah, it's not a bad gig. He's getting over a Schmilly to yeah. sign. Yeah, I would have taken second round. I I bet he got over, over three to... I don't know what it is anymore. Yeah, that's true because back in the day it was in the Millies. Yeah, it was in yeah, back in our day. And now was, well the second and, round was like two million dollars well, to sign. Right. And with forty five percent inflation, I mean <laughs> yeah. <laughs> actually he might that was gen- that's generous, man. That's really, really generous. He might have got there. ten to he might have got ten to sign as a second rounder. What do you yeah. get as a six rounder now at one point four? Why? Yeah, I well, bet it is. Have you seen gas prices? Yeah. So he uh, he went in the second round. That's pretty good. His movement skills are incredible, and he was a leader in that room. So you lose him. And look, I don't get it either because when I look at our offensive line, when I look at how they're built, I'm like, well, they should be destroying everybody. Like they're massive, massive, massive people. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe they figure it out this year. So let's say our offensive line is better from being ranked worst in the Big Ten. Let's say they get better. Great. Awesome. Neat. Uh, Our receiving core is going to be better, I believe. Uh, We still have no running back. I I don't know. I don't think – I don't know if we're going to be better at the receiver. You don't think so? Well, Toure was good. Yeah, but we had one, and that was it. Yeah, but he was a he was really good. I thought. Yeah, I thought so too. I just don't know who's the better receivers. But it's hard when you only have one. Yeah, but what if you have none? I mean, Scott didn't want to throw it to Austin Allen last year, so it was either 
It was either the quarterback's well, going to keep it or we're throwing it to fair. fair. I mean, Austin Allen kind is in the, but I, yes, they, it wasn't used correctly. Fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, so I think our receivers are going to be better just because we have more potential guys that can do it. Uh, I mean, this, this Joseph guy has been going hard on the receiver recruiting. So I would say, I'm assuming that we're going to find a couple that, that, could do something but it'd be hard as freshmen i don't know maybe we got some transfers I, that's how much i i used to actually care <clears throat> when i really thought we were going to be good mm-hmm. i mean because i was ta- i was biting i was biting the apple pie that the news media was dishing out tasted good and then after i ate it my i got really my stomach got really fat it was like i was a and then i turned into a skinny fat Mm-hmm. So I stopped eating the apple pie. But I don't believe we're going to be better at quarterback. I don't believe we're better at run, run, running back. Um, the key is, could we be better? Could, could we be better at the offensive coordinator position? That could make quarterbacks better. That could mm-hmm. make, you know what I'm saying? Or like mm-hmm. play calling, whatever it may be. Yeah, maybe making smarter decisions with the ball. Um, you know, or better, really or, hand- or better plays, maybe even being coached more, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. So it'll be interesting to see, but based on our personnel, I don't see us going, going better, better than six and six, maybe seven and five, but that's the absolute top. And, and it's still unacceptable for Nebraska football. I'd, I'd take, I'd take four and eight this year. I'm saying like after last year, I mean, I, that's, that's being a joke, but I'm, it's also kind of serious. Well, I believe for Scott to save his job for the year, meaning he doesn't get fired in November, like beginning of November, he has to be five and one through week six. I agree. I mean, fans will be like, no, no. It's like, Look at the contract. That's how it's the set re- up. That's how the whole re- renegotiation was set up. That is, if if he doesn't hit a certain amount, that it's mm-hmm. not good. So like that's the whole reason. One, if he's if he's three and three through week six, he's getting fired immediately. My favorite is when fans are like, "No, he'll stay. He'll stay regardless." Through the read the contract. That's all you have to do. Other like, why in the world would the <clears throat> the buyout happen after week six? I don't. I mean, it could have been after the season. Like, why would the buyout be after week six? When the schedule snaps right back into psycho mode. Yeah, because we get into our Big Ten play, the heart of the Big Ten play. Well, we don't really play anyone until week set, the seventh game. Besides exactly. Oklahoma, besides Oklahoma. Right, right. It's going to be a big telltale when we go to Ireland to play Northwestern. Is that where it is? Ireland? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's one of those. Uh, yeah, I think it's Ireland. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big, big, big one for us. We should absolutely stomp them. We should. I don't, I don't feel like that's how it'll work out. I'm saying Northwestern's too well coached. And they had their they had their down year last year. I just And I've never played in a London game in in the NFL. I did. It sucks. That that I would say can change a lot. Depending on how, how the team handles that. Depending well, we're, on we're, I would like to think we're more talented than Northwestern, but it definitely can you can can even it out yeah yeah i mean i've seen those games in london where where jacksonville destroys somebody good because you know what that trip is ridiculous because it's dumb can we just can we just go to the nfl quickly they're now having a game in germany Mm -hmm. yep makes sense also dumb nothing against uh, the Europeans that are fans in the of the NFL, there's a lot, but it's too hard on guys' bodies 
and sleep because of the sleep schedule and everything. People don't get it. That is terrible for professional athletes. And then add that our game is so aggressively physical. Like, what are we doing? As Bill Belichick would say, what are we doing? What are we doing out there? You know what have been, been a better idea is if we still had NFL Europe like we did back in the day, right? Yeah. If uh, the the team that, that won NFL Europe – got to play against like the Jaguars well, <laughs> not not necessarily the Jags but but we do a thing where where they play a game against like the they played two games like a Super Bowl series for them that would be against like the losers of the AFC and the NFC championship I mean I think it'd be bloody but <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. It, I don't think it'd work out well for all NFL Europe. But... It would make teams want to get to the Super Bowl and not lose the AFC Championship. They'd be like, "Oh my gosh, we have to play in the European League." In the I mean, NFL I guess you could do League. it against like the worst team in the NFL. It's kind of slap in the face. It's like, oh, we have, to, the NFL. we have to go to London to play. <laughs> this is gonna be good. We're already tired, but we have to go to London to play the NFL Europe team. Super and, Bowl champs. And how about? Uh, how about when when we did the uh, the Mexico City game? That was only only a few years ago. Uh, That's significantly better than London. Well, travel wise, yes, but now you're playing at like seventy five thousand feet, and it's like seventy five hundred degrees. <laughs> yeah, it's so hot. You're at ridiculous elevation. You like, like start like breathing in each other's mouth to try to breathe. So so CPR you know, in each other on the field, taking helmets know, off. You know what's hilarious is, is is when I keep hearing the NFL say things like, "Oh, our main concern is the health and safety of our players." <laughs> oh, oh, really? Really? So, so, so what's that look like? Oh, it's just green paper. Mm -hmm. The health and safety. But could you imagine that? Yeah. So like, we're going to send our players to Mexico City, have them play on a soccer field, which I played on soccer fields. It's not designed for football players. It's not. There's a lot more injuries that happen on soccer it's, fields. It's the worst for the football players. So much looser. It's not very safe. Right. right. Could you imagine though, you and I, like, because we played on the same team, and it's like we're just exhausted. We're could be a two minute drill, could be whatever. We call a timeout, and we take our helmets off and do mouth to mouth just to breathe. <laughs> but going going and playing in Denver, right, is an adjustment because it's six thousand feet or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, that's an adjustment when you're especially like a coastal coastal it's team not that hot yeah and it's not hot in denver but but every time playing in denver i had a routine to get myself acclimated as quickly as possible in the game where yeah. i pretty much like took your clothes off i run I mean, sprint well i i i do that when i in the winter time when i'd go play like in a hot place you did you'd always wear the shortest shorts and it was beautiful yeah uh but but in Denver, I had a routine where I would essentially run sprints to the point where I'm like vomiting before the game. And then that would get me acclimated really quick. Yeah, well, and it makes sense to vomit. Because but of, but to Denver, your hydration and everything. Denver's 6,000 feet. I'm pretty sure Mexico City is like, like 12,000 feet or something. I mean, like it, it's like double that. I don't know if it's 12, but we're going to believe it. I don't know what it is. I'm going to look it up. It's, it's, it's either, ridiculous. either way. It's just, can we figure something out NFL like that's so stupid it just doesn't make sense it's not even close to that 7300 oh I was way off 7350 but, but it's still a lot more than 349 <laughs> <laughs> but it's still a lot more than Denver well and it's just the temperature and I'm sure there's humidity there isn't there Scotty it's just hot every Psych. time it's just hot. There's a and then they have the quarter coronas. It's best. And then you and then you feel like you always have to shower. Yes. Ah. Uh, yeah. And all you eat is like whatever street meat that's on the corner. It's but amazing. it's so it's, it's so, so good. good. It gives you diarrhea. Yeah, it's really bad. Uh, but it's so good. Yeah, the best. And, and then you go back. Then you're like struggling in the toilet. Yeah. And then you're like, I need another one. Yeah. And you go DJ Cal, another one. <laughs> Just was, give me another uh, one. So the last Mexico City game that was played, what 
wasn't it the Patriots and the Raiders? I think it no, it was the Raiders. Yes, because I remember it. Uh, it really intrigued me because the Raiders were down there all week because they wanted to acclimate, and the Patriots flew down the day of the game. I think. Did they? I think they did. Or the night, the day before, they wouldn't May- be on the day. Maybe it was the day before, but I know I I know it was like like Belichick's thought was, we aren't acclimating, we're just zipping down there and zipping out because because you can't possibly get acclimated not to in, that in in that amount of time, like you could be down there a week, but it's going to take you a month to be acclimated to it. So so his 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 thought was if you go down there for an extended period before the game, it's actually going to hurt you. And I think I think the Patriots won. Yeah, I think they might have. Because I mean, it didn't matter. They usually won. Figuring out a way to to get through it. Was that when Tom was there? That would have probably been when mm-hmm. Tommy was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now he's just making trillies. Not even <laughs> not even Billy's. He's making trillies off of Fox. Fox Sports. What's what the heck is that? Three hundred seventy-five million over ten. Is that correct, Scotty? I think that is. 37 and a half a year for when he's done playing. He's that, that's more than he makes playing. Yeah. And he's not going to have to do anything except announce. What's your take on that slaw? Like, well, I can't, but we don't even get 37 and a half dollars an episode. Like, hey, what? I'm not even three dollars and 75 cents, not even 375. <laughs> Penny we're, pesos. We're losing money. We're talking about Mexico City. Had to throw it in there. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> no, no. You know I what's using. funny about this? This, this, this is what I find find funny. I mean, whether he deserves could it or you, not. Wait, could you imagine you and I doing a Monday night broadcast like the Mannings? <laughs> First of all, we'd be canceled so fast. Yeah, we That's would. the beauty of it. You could do it on Twitch. Should we do we need to start doing that? Just twitching I thought it Twitch up. Twitch was for gaming. Maybe. Well, a lot of yeah, but a lot of like people do this now. Like they'll yeah, go yeah, on, they'll we'll get some ex athletes and they'll go in a room and you gotta pay to come in. Hey, so people go. pay for that. Let, kind of oh. sounds like an OnlyFans. <laughs> well, yeah, we, 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 we maybe we could just do it on your OnlyFans page. So we don't oh, have, we don't have to rebrand it. So we could Perfect. just do it there. Yeah, yeah. How's your only, how, how's your OnlyFans going? Right I got a lot of traction. I got a lot That's of traction. Great. A lot of requests to put more clothes on. Oh, That's I thought you were doing request. traction for your back in it. I know. I'm getting a lot of traction on it. Uh, no, the, <laughs> what I find completely it's... absurd about this 375, it, it isn't the number. Uh, because it is like, to me a little like like money to to quarterbacks it's such a different world like I don't understand it but what what I find absurd is the fact that he's still playing he's not even there in that realm and he's never done it before like and yet and he and yet he is worth more than every other broadcaster that's ever done it what how I love it I think it's hilarious. Fox Fox got burned like they didn't never thought they were going to lose Joe Buck and Aikman and literally like Fox was like we're all in I still don't even know if the deal is going to happen no, no I let, just don't I don't even this. know if it's going to happen I think he'll be per- a trillion I think he'll be way better than Troy Aikman though I he's yeah. nothing oh. against Troy Aikman okay like this has nothing to do personal wise but I struggled listening to him talking football yes Yes. I don't, I don't like him or Buck. That's just, that's just my, I can't, I, I'm not into them. Yeah, yeah. I am. I am with you. I'm there. not what, into them. Like that what I Scott. like, <laughs> what I like about them is they're so easy to tune out. Chris yeah. Goldsworth is, is nails on a chalkboard to me. Yeah. He's there's like that. not nails. He's not nails. He's nails on a chalkboard. To, Tony Romo. His, I love Tony. His content is incredible. Uh, his voice kind of bothers me a little bit. Uh, yeah, I struggle see, with Nance see some pe- too. See, I love Nance. Sorry, I know you guys do. I don't. Yeah, I, I love like Nance, Nance at the Masters. Voice. Yes, oh Nan- Nance at the Masters is. Oh disgusting. my gosh! Like I love, Nance love at it. the Masters. If I could just have that on repeat. Oh my gosh! <sighs> I just I just want a recording of it to sleep to. Oh my gosh! His voice. Just... His voice is incredible to me. Hello, friends. 
<laughs> uh, but but the fact you have all these people all these people that have been doing this for an eternity and tom brady isn't even available for the job yeah, and he's automatically making yeah money. barkley had him on they had him on the tnt the other night because they're playing that golf tournament him and um uh rogers against uh mahones and um whatever the dude from I buffalo there'll be a lot of great shots oh nice they're, so they're so much they're competing yeah, but they had, um, they had Brady on and uh, Rogers and Barkley was like, yo, what's up with your contract? <laughs> and and Tom like totally dodged it. No, we're not there yet. We're still playing the season. But you know, Barkley, like Barkley, that TNT group is really good. They're but, unreal. But they're even, I don't even know if Barkley's making half of that. He, no, he is. I, I'm pretty sure they're not. Like yeah. they're doing fine. They're the best. Like, they're the best. I wish they do football. They're the best. Is, I, I, I can Romo watch their getting, show like, like I 28 million or something. Yeah, it's high. It's in the yeah, high 20s. I, I don't is that what it is? He was, was ground he was groundbreaking I it was too. 17. Hold on, I'm going to look it up. We are so I mean, terrible today. I saw the whole list of it. It's 17 million. It's 17? Yeah. So oh, least, so who is Tom's the number 2? 20. 20 more. Oh, it's 17.5, the 10-year contract for Tony Romo. But Highest... there's somebody else getting 20, 28. Aikman's something. getting about 17. Who oh, my it? gosh. He makes more? No, he, he gets right at 17. Who is number two on the list behind Tom? There's somebody I'm looking right now. Highest paid sports broadcasters in the world. G oh, no, that's Tony hey, Romo. Strahan gets 17. Tony Romo gets 17.5. Chris Collinsworth gets 12.5. That's that's 12.48 more than I he don't know who's making it more, but I'm looking at this list and hey, if we let's just let's just say what Scott, what do you think Slaw and I are worth to a company? How much do you think I'm worth? <laughs> 20,000 doing all 17 games so i've been doing this a long time i actually think there's a lot of value in you too personally i just and that, do. that's not that's not you because you like us as no. long, i'm saying as long as we don't say a cancel cancelable thing mm. which that's so i that's, i that's, yeah that's actually, tough we need to have the beat button on the red i mean that would be well an, oh you're talking about live oh you're talking about like if we were games. actually broadcasting yeah, yeah. there would if you're the producer, you you hate your life every time Matt talks because you don't know. <laughs> no, and the only reason is is because you got to be. You know, you're gonna drop an f bomb. Well, gonna... It's live. You're like, uh... that's fucking bullshit. I, yeah, I, I hardly ever swear. You get you get so mad when somebody's like when the line isn't trying hard. Mm -hmm. You, oh, I don't even know what would come out of your mouth. Like somebody would would do the mo most like ridiculous block and just whiff. Maybe, maybe we'll like, how do you fuck that up? Yeah. How do you fuck that up? But I but honestly, is, that's what we want to hear. I think you about it all the time. Like how great would it ha be to have like that people that actually know the game, like you guys would be a great example. And then just came on and there was no filter mm -hmm. zero. Yeah. So we could do that. We just we can can't do it on NBC. Yeah, or let's do not, or not or yet. Or CBS. Maybe. Not do yet. Nebraska, do we do a Nebraska game as a try? We could do one game. Like we could, we could try one game this year mm -hmm. and maybe, maybe we'll do the Northwestern game as a trial. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be sweet. If I'm not golfing because it will be in the fall, like we'll have to, we'll have to, yeah. there's some yeah. loose ends on that. Let's not commit yet, but, no. but I think we, I think it'd be fun. Or we do a game in the, or we do a game in this winter time, like a bowl game or oh could you do the Nebraska bowl out. game. Oh, then the they might not make figure it. out. Well, then the thing is we're going to have to, you know, it's coming. You're going to probably get offered 40 million to start doing color, color commentating. And then are we going to have the pot? Oh, I thought you were saying I was going to get offered $40 million to do coloring. <laughs> like I'm Bob, Bob Ross or something. We're just going to put a happy little bush over we're, there. We're going we're gonna to watch the game as you, like, paint a picture. <laughs> <laughs> happy little bush. Happy, happy tree. I'm just going to put a tree over here. Don't even know, don't even know where this river's going yet. <laughs> just a stream. Just a trickling stream. Yeah. I can hear it right now. Put a couple sticks over here. It'll be our little secret. Gosh. <laughs> Bob Ross is so incredible to watch. Oh my I, god. I have no idea 
how someone hasn't taken over. God, and when he paints, like he'll be starting. I'm like, what is this travesty of a painting he's making? And, <laughs> and when he's done, thing. I'm like, put this in a museum. <laughs> like, golly. It's like one of the most amazing uh, portraits mm -hmm. you've ever seen. And the paint just looks beautiful. Yeah, he's, he's some, something else. And he makes it look like anybody can do it. Like my kids, kids could, could just dominate some. Just a little crazy. brown right here. Just a little brown over here. Yeah. Just, yep, yep, just, just Gonna a take a little Prussian blue. And then he uh, has like his little painting knife that he's mm -hmm. just like. Mm. I love it when he slaps uh, the brush on the thing. He just oh. like. <laughs> We're still talking about Bob Ross. Holy yeah. crap. That's amazing. I had to go pick, let somebody in the door. It's or then, and then you just have the, I love it. I was talking about how you have like the little painting knife and he just carves a little brown, little brown right here. Mm -hmm. Scrapes it. Just a little scrapey scraper. Makes a little mountain. Yeah, he is. Yeah. When he does the mountains with the knife, I'm just <sighs> like, I, I was watching it with my wife and we're watching him do, do, do these mountains. And he like, and he takes takes the brush and he does the outline and then he takes his knife and goes scrape and it's like a perfect texture of a mountain and i'm like fuck you bob ross <laughs> fuck you i could never do that that's why does, I, that's why it would be a nightmare to be your producer for oh that moment right gosh, there but it's magic just right there is the social media teaser to to this uh, uh, to this pod yeah, yeah. so anyway, i don't know back back to tom brady like look Great, greatest quarterback of all time. Get it. I mean, he's, he's, he's ridiculous, but how is he automatically the highest paid broadcaster of all time? I don't, I don't, when he's it never either. done it. I really don't. Well, know. I mean, it's obvious. Like I think his jerseys was the number one selling again last year. I mean, they're just going after popularity. Everybody's obsessed with them. He's probably, would you say he's probably the most well-known nationally football player yeah like mm -hmm. yes so i mean he is the biggest name in there they're not going on his broadcast is, is patrick mahomes number two i don't know who that would be but i probably not i mean tom's got a lot of years and a lot of yeah, championships I think that's why but i think I number two all would the be kids all the kids at my kids school all they care oh, about is patrick mahomes yes but think about this that's like nebraska though because kansas city's so close that's mm -hmm. the only team we follow yeah midwest follows actually that's a great question i would love to know who everybody like aaron Rodgers, probably number two i think yeah i think aaron Rodgers is two i mean and then antonio brown number three just because he's <laughs> easily, funny easily yeah easily if he's not something's rigged <laughs> but but woody you know you know tom yeah. Uh, on a personal level, obviously you've seen him work. Showered with him. Yep. Oh, God. That's how I know. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> what is what is your opinion on deserving? And and look, look, the money is inconsequential. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But deserving of the number one slot in broadcasting. What is your opinion on that? I mean, I don't. I think I think Romo should be. And then after one year, if Tom comes in and he's just like nails communication wise, then it's like, okay, bump him up. But like, they're paying for his name, you know, yes. I, I, now I think he should be number one at Fox because he's, he's the attraction. You know what I mean? But I'm saying like money, like, like Romo's proven to be pretty sick at it, even though like he can get off base some it's still kind of funny because he doesn't care about being polished for TV. He just like says what he thinks and it actually works whereas i just don't i mean everyone's listened to tom's um interviews and it's just like i'm not really sure how it's gonna work out it's like hey bill belichick do you want to be on um whatever espn countdown like i just don't think that's gonna work very good but here's 47 million bill yeah i i i would love to see terry bradshaw and either howie long or uh or michael strahan michael strahan i just i could listen to him i mean with his little lisp going uh and and he's so passionate about defensive line play and terry bradshaw's a weirdo and all that uh and he's and i'm 
when I say we're weirdo, I mean, he's like, he's like a funny, crazy nut. Yeah. yeah he's like uh, your crazy uncle. Yeah, yeah no doubt. And having, ha- having him and Howie Long together or him and Michael Strahan together, uh, I, I think for Fox would, would be an awesome move, but to just throw Tom in there when he's never done it and to say, yep, it's, it's worth half a billion dollars. Uh, I mean, that's coaching. I mean, like even for his, they were interviewing about these playing this golf tournament with Aaron Rodgers. Aaron was like, yeah, I'm not even practicing. He's like, Tom's got like 10 swing coaches, like going all in on it. And that's, that's the same thing with broadcasting. You just, he probably, they'll probably start training him before sooner than they, might, yeah. yeah, they did I it mean, with Tony Romo. They, they were calling them to fake games. Yeah. yeah. They call fake games, him and uh, Nance before they actually signed him. Nice. That, what were they calling like 1994 games? I was probably a game in London. That would have been the most, yeah, probably a game in London because no one else watched it. Yeah. So. I got a question. I got a question for you guys. It'd be interesting your take on this and we can move on after that. But did you guys see the whole like Saban deal and Texas yes. A&M? Yeah. So like when you hear those words going back, and then you see Jimbo's response on if you I, re- I coached it. with them and I you kn- loved it. Okay, so like when you hear them talk, You're like what do you explain to me what this is because I didn't see any of this. So so what happened is Saban accused Jimbo Fisher at Texas AM of them buying players through mm-hmm. the NIL and saying that's not what it's supposed to be about. Well, that's and what I, happened. Yeah, well, yeah, but what's happened the last 15 years at Alabama? We don't know. <laughs> no, they've been buying players. I mean do we do we know like is that something that you're are we just co- like are we contemplating this or do we know i know I, I know what happened at nebraska i know i don't even know if you guys want to go we don't have to i don't want no, to put anybody online there. I, okay we cool so i want to know like so when you get to the nfl you're like yeah dude like alabama bought me this new car and this new that like but how does it stay under the umbrella if people are really getting paid for the most part, it just it's a, does. It's the same way that Nebraska did back in the day. Mm-hmm. Like, there's ways to like just turn the other cheek. <coughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not. You would think more players teams, would it's be other teams too. It's not just Nebraska. No, I know it's everybody, right? They're all cheating. It's just who's but, getting caught, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. In Alabama, it's just who's the dumbest. That's what it is. It's like, who's like really stupid about it? Well, we've like, been talking about this since they opened up NIL, about these are the problems that yeah. are coming. And we knew it with, was. With, with this NIL. But the and, thing is too, Slaw, is I have a problem with saving and calling it out. It's like, bro, it's like, you're yeah. now getting mad that people are having the funds that you had the last 15 years. It's like, just pay more. I mean, you guys have been doing it. They, they've been... I don't and have it's Alabama. Res- I don't have it, any receipts, but everyone knows. Like it's mm-hmm. known. But no, do- so it's no. It happens. Long. It happens. They, I'm not not I'm not I never I player. never got it. No. I never but, got it. But, but, but and a saying, lot of guys didn't get, but there were certain players that got it. But and that's just play- and that's just at Nebraska. And in Alabama was they had a lot of guys. So my guess is they probably had a few more. When you're talking about USC. From- I mean, look, we we know about the stuff that happened at USC with yeah. Reggie Bush. They 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 bought his his mom mom a house or something. Mm-hmm. Allegedly, yeah. Well, that's, meaning they did. That's yeah. why that's why he had to give his Heisman Trophy back, right? Which yeah, I think it's the stupidest thing ever. Like, what if yeah, and what is. if his mom worked for the university? <laughs> <laughs> right, and that was in her contract. Yeah. But like the so, thing is, I have well, no problem with him paying. I like I'm not getting mad, but it's like, oh everyone can do the same thing you've been doing Alabama. And now you're mad that people are catching up recruiting guys. It's like, like, come on. So let's break down Saban for a second here. I believe he is correct that Texas A&M just dominated the recruiting pool because they, they, they spent how, how, how much was it? It was like, it was like 35 million. I don't know, but it it was was a lot lot of money. Uh, A lot of oil money. Yeah. That's an easy way to recruit crew players when you promise them money uh do you think and, they ever promised money at alabama in the past 15 years oh they absolutely have and, uh, and now other people are doing it 
Well, Texas A and M was was doing it too. It's just now they don't have to hide it. Yes, but so, not. But but the thing is, not to this level, probably. Yeah. But so, and it's like Alabama. You've been have enough money. You've been probably paying as much as anyone. So now you just now that it's legal, just pay a little more, like right. everyone else is, because now that so A and M just bought an insane recruit, recruiting class. But what do you good think? For, good for them. What do you think Nebraska was doing in the '90s, and Florida was doing in the '90s? Miami was doing Florida in State. the '90s. USC, Texas, like Oklahoma. All the, all the dynasties were doing something. They were all doing it, but Texas A and M just completely dominated. No, uh, the, the recruiting was it the, pool was it the coaches? Year. No, it was boosters or mm-hmm. whatever. Like it's not. It's not. Well, I guess maybe some places it could have been. But like for the most part, it's my guess that you just get set up randomly meeting a booster, right? And then next thing you know, you randomly have dollars. Yeah. But this is where I think Saban's wrong. Uh, now, for him to say it seems that, whiny to me, th- man. That it's not what NIL is designed for. Of course not. Yeah, but like- but but you know what computers were designed for? Not porn. And what are they used for? <laughs> nil to porn yeah what was social media designed for not for democrats and republicans to send death threats at each other it's fair that's not not what it was designed for we fuck it up as humans always we take something great and we turn it crappy with nil it just happened immediately is all that happened this episode is brought to you by Matt's lost on the only fans page. Hey, so Danny, I mean, well, let's 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 be uh, honest for for now. So when when you played at the University of Nebraska Lincoln, how much did they pay you? Well, I didn't play at the University oh, of Nebraska. Oh, I forgot. But well, when the, when Chadron, they wanted you to walk on, no, oh, they didn't even want that. that okay, I they forgot. Actually said. <laughs> And they didn't even say it because I would have had to go through admissions, but they would have maybe you would have had to pay to them there to pay them and not. I think I could play on the intramural team, but instead I was like, I'm going to Shadron because I'm getting paid my tuition and room and board. Yeah, I didn't have all those perks. You didn't have the booster club sending you envelopes. Uh, no, does Shadron have would... a booster club? <laughs> I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's people that support the program, right? Mm-hmm. There's got to be. I mean, I think that's how it works at all colleges, but the local cattle ranchers. Daddy doesn't know that. <laughs> the, the Cattle Ranchers Association is sending sending money to Shadron. Or a cow. Here, bro. Here's a cow. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man. This is illegal. Like, here's a cow, Danny. Take care of it. You know what our, you know what our, uh, <laughs> You know what our dude like, honestly so would have I, been is if we were at like a I don't know a barbecue place or a, a cooking like a outdoor like barbecue and some random person handed you a beer. <laughs> that was our perks. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know if that ever happened, but I'm saying like we don't most people don't really even have scholarships out there. So like we're just grinders, blue collar mm-hmm. people just you know, we're not getting getting all these things. We don't have to worry about the savings of the world. That's why you just go D2. Yeah. Well, well, to go to your comment of Saban sounding it's just white, petty. It's like, and he's yeah. one of my favorite coaches of all time in college. Yeah. But and when I was you like listen super to him, disappointed. When you listen to him the majority of the time, he's mostly whining. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's just what Saban does. It's like, don't, but it, the thing that bothers me is it's like, don't whine about other people doing things that you can doing like Mm -hmm. that's just like hard for me it's like and maybe he takes something else into account these players that are getting these millions of dollars to come in and play guess what the majority of them are gonna be crap you still gotta win and you still gotta play you still have to develop a lot well a lot of because these these are 18 year old kids terrible anyways it isn't like when the new york yankees buys their championships because they're buying professionals to come in and do their job these I are already it, professionals. In some yeah. ways, the teams are going to suck even more, bro, because yes. they're paying more money. These companies are. It's not just boosters. It's mainly, it's like companies, and 
the thing that sucks is it's like, well, we're paying money. This guy's got to play. So you're having outside sources yes. deciding playing time. Oh, there's no the doubt about that. Thing ever. I think it takes a way millions to 18 year old kids. It that's takes more away, money than their family's ever seen before. Yeah. It takes away their do? edge, right? Like yes. I got to say it takes away. Cause a lot of the kids are, you ever see, you know, on draft day from my observation, can't wait to buy mom a house. Can't wait to take care of mom. Can't wait to do this. They're already being taken care of. And they I mean, grinded, I'm an 18 year old kid. Their whole college career. Yes in the hopes of hitting that lottery okay. of NFL. Yes, yes. And you take that away. If I just keep working and grinding and busting my yeah. ass, then I can take care of my family. Mm-hmm. Got an 18-year-old kid that's already taken care of his family. Mm-hmm. Now, if he if he does what he's supposed to do, guess what? That $2 million he made in college will be peanuts compared to the 20, 30, whatever million he makes in the NFL. Uh but an 18 year old kid doesn't think like, like that. No, because when I was an 18 year old kid, I thought and, about one thing and I got a $20 bill. It's like, sweet case of beer. Yeah. I'm all set. Yep. Can I say something? <sighs> NIL is still way better than having <laughs> to deal with porn. <laughs> Just for <laughs> our listeners out there. <laughs> It was an example of how we as humans just mess everything up. That is true. I, mean, I don't know what the percentage is, but it, the internet, when you think about the yeah, internet, or NIL is better than the internet then. Yeah. But what the internet was designed to be, it's maybe the most incredible invention. Yeah, I agree. But I agree. Our, next, thing, our next thing you know, NIL is going to just be only fans pages everywhere. <laughs> of all these football players. Actually, uh, that was a great idea. Self-promotion. <laughs> like you guys could have did your own. New- Oh my new- gosh. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, but think of how ridiculously innovative or ingenious the internet is. And what is it majority used for? That is the problem of, of what we do as humans. Scott Pappick, Danny Woodhead, and Matt Sloss have become billionaires, only football players. <laughs> <laughs> know your worth in IL. We should start an ad agency that helps these players develop their only fans page. The only football players. Mm-hmm. Only football players. A- yes. I think Dallin Dallin could could help with that. Hey, we could start a new company called OFP. Yeah. The only football players. I mean, I'm just trying to get the name, image, and likeness for these players. Yeah, but to best sort, interest. But to sort of stay on track is I think Saban's right, and yes, you're right. He is being a whiny little bitch. He's but, right, and he's wrong. He's right that it is exactly what we said was going to happen with the NIL. He's wrong to get mad about it because they've been doing it for years, and Alabama's still doing it. They just didn't pony up forty three billion or or million or thirty five million, whatever Texas A and M did. Uh, they're, they're still getting, they probably you, spent 30 mil. No, you know, and it's like, okay. Still have, he said that it was three. There's no chance it was three because I think Bryce, I think the quarterback's probably getting a, a Schmelly alone. Yeah. Oh, their quarterback. Yeah. He signed for a 1.5, I believe before yeah. he even touched the ball. Exactly. He's good so, though. He's, he's good. He's amazing. Yeah. That worked out for him, but, but, but I'm, but I'm just saying like, come on, like, what are we, as Bill Belichick, his best friend, he said, Nick, what are we doing? What, Nick, what are we doing? You think Bill Belichick would ever be bitching about this? No, he'd say, he just wouldn't talk to the media. They'd say, what do you think? Yeah, those, those are the rules. Um, yeah, we're just going to try to get better every day. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we're going to try to get the best talent we can have. Hey, are you going to pay? Hey, Bill, uh, are you going to pay 10 million? I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, a, I'm not a CPA. Uh, not and, when, a CPA. and when he goes into the staff room, he's going to bitch to the staff and go, how stupid is this? Yeah. You, can, you know what? Go, what everybody deals go with. Go cry with your staff. Out. Go cry with your staff. Yeah. Have a, you'll have a, a shoulder to cry on. Let's move on. I can't, I can't talk about this anymore. This makes me want to fight someone. All right. What's your wisdom? Uh, I was watching the, uh, what was it, the PGA Championship this weekend. Yes. You guys would know better. Uh, oh. I I watched on, uh, I watched Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yep. And uh, it got me thinking. I know, Danny, you're you're competing. 
to yes. try to get to the U S open. And I, you know, pretty much every time I, uh, I, I, there's so many words I want to say right now. Um, Sam, <laughs> as much as, uh, you know, I, every time I turn around, you're being interviewed by someone else. I mean, which is awesome. Incredible. Um, what are you looking for when you watch these championships now, now that you're competing and you're trying to, I'm not saying you're trying to get on the tour, but maybe, um, I'm not saying you're trying to be a full-time golfer. Yeah. Maybe, but He's anyway, a full-time golfer. Yes. But I'm, I'm just, I'm curious, like, what are you looking for compared to like me that doesn't even know? Um, I don't know. I, th I think it's just the way that those guys get around a golf course. So on Sunday, Justin Thomas ended up winning the PGA championship. And, and I think it's a great example of there was some encouragement for all golfers. He cold just skis one on a par three, and he had a hundred. He had a hundred and five in, I think, for a second or third shot. He like it was terrible. It was a par three, and he said he got up and down from like I don't know forever away for a bogey, and it made it very real for every human that's ever played golf. You're like, ah, I've done that before, and there been there done that but also how he like just like refocuses recollects his mind and and just finds a way to bogey like the thing about those guys is they they have bad shots you see some of their shots and it's like the most encouraging thing ever because you're like oh i have bad shots much much more frequently but the way they get around the golf course they don't the great ones they don't give up and they're like okay I'm going to do everything I can to avoid a double bogey. Like that will not happen. I'm I'll, I'll get a bogey and that's it. Um, so I, I think just the way they get around the golf course, sometimes it's like, this is a lot of times, especially in those champions, it's chips. It's like, I am not trying to birdie. Like there's no part in my mind that's trying to birdie this hole. So I'm going to try to par it. And the way they go about it's just differently than what the average golfer would do. Like the average golfer thinks I'm birdieing every hole. It's like, that's kind of stupid. Like, cause that's not even possible. Um, and even for like myself, like, especially when you get in games at the club or wherever with your buddies, if you're giving up strokes, sometimes you have to try to birdie. Like you have to, because if you're giving up a stroke and the person you're giving a stroke to is straight down the middle and has 115 in, it's like, well, I got to hope they don't birdie and I have to birdie. So it like, it also gets me more in a tournament mindset. And it's funny too, Slaw. Like I was talking to someone. It's funny how once I played in a tournament and my score matters and everything, it's like no one's getting any strokes like you do play golf so much different. Like it's like, okay. you can't afford to make a big mistake like that. Yeah. Well, and it's just like, all right. I, yeah. Cause you can't, you can't go after a pin and short side yourself. It's like, no, I'm going to try to do everything I can to get it on the green or around the green and just live with it to putt and leave. Like there was one whole whole eight at OCC, you know, that one it's like 483 uphill into the wind. It's like mm. just a, not a, not a, not a good situation, right? Yeah, yeah. And, Ridiculous hole. I hate that hole with a passion. And I went, I went driver five iron, and I pounded my driver, and I hit it to the fat of the green, and I had a circus two putt, but I was able to do it. Like you just have to find a way to. Is that the number one handicap hole there? It's it's that or twelve. I think I don't know which one it is. I think eight's the hardest hole there. Mm -hmm. and I don't yeah. think it's, I don't think it's close either. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, it's just, it makes you find a way to get around the course. That's, that's, what's so impressive about those guys is they just, all right, I'm going to try to hit it. I'm going to try to miss it in the correct spot. I'm going to try to miss in the correct spot on the fairway, or even if it leaks into the rough, I want to miss it on the right side to where I have a chance to still par because at the end of the day, you're playing like you're playing par, whatever. 
And you want to give yourself an opportunity to par every hole at worst or like, yeah, that's your goal. And man, like that, that's just changes mindset. And it's like, how do I do this? How do I do that? And that's, that's what you got to focus on. Hmm. You know, uh, I only watched the PGA championship on Thursday. Uh, but that re- there's, there's two things that stuck out to me. Uh, so I was watching the feature group of uh, Scotty Scheffler and John Rahm. Uh, and that ridiculous par five, like 650 yard par five. And Rom hits it like 365 off the tee and Scheffler hits it like 345 off the tee. And they're both going for the green on a 650 yard par five. And Scheffler puts it 10, 10 feet yeah, and, yeah. and drains an eagle. I'm like, what? And then John Rom still took uh i don't know what he took like a five wood or something and i mean he hit an unreal shot and it just skirted off the back of the green and then he hit a terrible putt coming in but he got a birdie so whatever um but i was looking at his putt going like oh this is a easy an easy putt for him and he just like like squirts it over like four feet right of the flag i'm like that was the worst putt i've ever seen rom what are you doing you putting like me uh and then he drains a drains a bird so everything was fine but and and then the par three the 245 yard par three like what what are we doing here guys it's crazy like yeah the one where tiger jacked up his back back on because he he swung a three iron as hard as he possibly could Tiger looked bad, like yeah. struggling walking, like it hurt my leg when I was walking. It's like, is my leg, did I get in a, that wreck? Yeah. Like it's, uh, I think that that was the whole, that why he had to withdraw on Saturday. Right. Cause he just barely made the cut. I didn't watch. He, bar- he did make the cut barely, but yeah. then he and then played then the next Saturday, day. He's like, and then he withdrew he said, in the I middle can't. of the round. No, not in the middle of the round. After the round, he's like, he oh, played I'm, it. I'm piecing out, but I think it it was from that swing on Thursday because he I have no idea. He was looking fine until that swing. And, and he almost fell over. Like when he stepped back, Mm. he stepped back and something, something hit in his back. I know that feeling something hit and the whole rest of the day looked like he could barely walk. And then I didn't watch Friday. And then obviously he took himself out on Saturday. He just looked uncomfortable. The whole, everything looked uncomfortable uh but yeah the distances of some of these holes now i will say this i they they get those they get those fairways firm and fast Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah but but still yes but still a 250 yard par three and an almost 700 yard par five yeah but think about occ on three is like 245 250 yeah, but it's all the way downhill. I know, but we don't, you can't tell visually on those. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like those all, might be all, downhill. All the par threes at OCC are significantly downhill, right? Mm. And then everything else is uphill. <laughs> well, five's not downhill. Let me think of five. It's, just, I think, one of the toughest holes on the whole course. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, the part and that's not even that yeah. long that one's only like 190 something yeah but it's circusville green yeah it is it is nice. yeah no so I, I mean a decent amount of, i i think downhill's hard though i personally think it's so hard because it's you can't distance it's of, wise it's so hard and a lot harder harder to control your spin and yeah and the wind like if it's a lot of them play into the wind that's mm-hmm. miserable Everything at OCC is always into the wind. I don't get it. I, it does feel like that, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't understand it. It's just, if you think about it, it's just science. Uh, I don't understand at your course how, how whole. Trust the science. Four, 14, 15, and 16 are always into the wind. And they're all going different directions. <laughs> how, how does that happen? It's, it's confusing. But... Uh, 
It's worse yeah, than Amen Corner. I thought it was nuts. Uh, I do want to ask you a question. Sorry, I kind of got yeah, you go on ahead. topic here. Go ahead. What is Jordan Spieth doing in his pre-shot routine? So he's trying to get a feel to keep his, I think his arms out in front. So he doesn't want to get stuck. That's, and he even said it like, he's not, it's a pre-shot routine. It's a feel versus like real. He's like, I'm not trying to do what I'm doing in my pre-shot routine. It's but he just, is doing that. He's coming over the top now. Yeah. No, not in his swing. In his pre-shot routine, he is. Yeah, he's coming he's, so far over the top and but doesn't he's trying get to, you he's, stuck? No, he, no, get stuck is where you're getting like stuck behind you. Oh, uh, where you're kind of laying back yeah. too much. So what he's trying to do is, and, and I don't think he's really getting stuck. I think he's swinging left and trying to play a fade on some things. Um, but yeah, I... I think it's just a feel he's trying to, I saw an interview. He's trying to get back to what he was doing when he first came out on tour. Mm -hmm. It's, it's to get his hands out in front of him a little bit. Do you think it's helping him? Yes. I think he's, I think he's playing so much better than he's played like so much better. Hmm. I mean, I think it's hard to go off of what happened in Tulsa because there were some people that just like Scotty Scheffler, number one player in the world, didn't even make the cut. So like it, it, that course was playing difficult. Yeah. Well, I've never, I've never liked Spieth a lot um, uh, for super petty reasons. Uh, I I did. I loved him or I liked him at first. Then I went through a phase of like, couldn't stand him. I thought he was too whiny. Mm -hmm. And then now I just, I kind of like him again. So in the beginning, when he was on fire, like he was just an unreal putter. So yeah. he would just he would just do everything he's supposed to do, and then just putt from everywhere. Well, and he I will say when he first came on tour, he hit his irons pretty nails. But mm-hmm. then he went through a time I don't know if he was trying to change stuff, but it was zero dark thirty, not Ricky mm-hmm. Fowler zero dark thirty, but 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 to me, since he started doing this this over the shot over the top pre shot deal it uh i'm i mean when he hits the ball ball good it's it's as good as anybody but his bad shots are worse than when he was bad well i i think he's i think he's he's been in he's won this year he's had a second he's he he's had one or two wins i don't know but he's he's been way he's been way more competitive and yeah i think it's the best year he's had in a while yeah overall so well just a just a curiosity thing cause, yeah because i watch that i'm like dude i swing over the top because i'm i'm huge and i'm inflexible and i don't know what i'm doing so i swing over the top and i know how bad that sucks so why are you yeah. practicing to get over the top if you look at alex nor and some of the stuff that he does his pre-shot oh, pre-shot routines weird justin rose is used to be a little different I think mm-hmm. it's just whatever your feel is to get to where you actually want to be. Yeah. So, I mean, I hate coming over the top and I don't know how to fix it. It's all I work on is not coming over the top. And that's and, what she said. <laughs> I just need more but flexibility. Could, yeah. But it could be, could get you stuck sometimes too, mm-hmm. because you go the other end. You know what I'm saying? Cause you get stuck and like feel. block it out to the right. Yep. Yeah. Game of subs. But then he comes over the top and he shanks it over to the right. <laughs> like speed, but he, just, just. But he he's he's been pretty solid though. Yeah. Okay. Bring the kids in. Yeah. Gabriel, come on, kids. Let's go, Gabe. Let's go, Gabe. Gabe. Get, Get in, in here. here. Give me the Get book. in here, Gabe. Hey, bring your friends too. Bring right. Reggie in here. Gather children. Uh, this is a senior long time, Reggie. Good to see you. Yeah. This will be quick. Um, but last week, I had my first ever experience with planting for the new farm. Uh, mm. We're opening this fall for uh, Slauson Farms. Um, it was, is it going to be Slauson Farms? Is that what? It's no, going? it's going to be 333 Farms. Uh, why, why 333? I mean, it's it important, sounds cool, but it, it's important to Cami. Um, uh, Cammy's my wife for for you 14 listeners uh, so it's 333 farms because uh, 
I guess there's like biblical references of 333 being the number of not the number of angels, but like, uh, like a, uh, like a divine number or something, yeah. you know, opposite of the other number. Um, yeah. So, and, uh, Cammy's dad died in, in college and, uh, she was super, super close with him. Uh, and, uh, you know, whether it's coincidence or superstition or what, but, uh, every time she's thinking about her dad, she looks at the clock and it happens to be three thirty three. Mm-hmm. Uh, it happens multiple times a week. Wow. Um, so yeah, it was kind of a, kind of a shout out to her dad and this is her dream to do this. Uh, this, this was her prop project. So, um, I, I want to, I want her to be able to do whatever she wants. So we're naming the farm 333 and, uh, we're, my job is is the outside stuff putting stuff in the ground uh you know running the machinery so uh this month i'm planting sweet corn all month and then next at the start of next month then the pumpkins and squash and gourds and everything will go in the ground uh, so i started planting sweet corn first time ever mind you uh never done any egg farming in my life uh never ran a planter uh bought one from a guy around here uh it's things like 30 or 40 years old uh and it runs runs great but i had no real understanding of how to use it other than i brought a buddy of mine who's a pumpkin farmer in iowa out to look at it to make sure everything was good and and he kind of gave me a rough uh uh introduction on how it works and uh, that was last year. And he asked me when he came out last year, he said, Hey, do you need to write any of this, this down? I'm like, nah, got it, bro. My mind is a, is a vault. So got this. Well, I was wrong. It was not quite a vault. So I go get the planner set up, um, get it hooked up to the tractor. And then I have to put these drive drive chains on. Cause then as the wheels spin, then the chains go, from these sprockets up to another sprockets on these shafts that go out to these other sprockets, more chains back to the planter boxes and these little things under the planter boxes that spin and, and that t- turns the wheels and has the seeds fall every so often. I got everything set up perfectly and, and, uh, and I start planting and I plant 20 rows 20 rows of sweet corn. And these rows are probably like a hundred yards long. And after planting 20 rows, then I get out, I walk back, check the seed tubs to make sure I'm not out of seed. Guess what? All the seed is still in the tubs. I'm like, holy crap, what did I miss? And So I'm just looking around the thing, trying to figure out how the thing works. And I see these little clips underneath. I'm like, hey, wonder what these do. And I kind of push on the clip and the clip just pops and this and this thing engages into the boxes. I'm like, oh, you dummy. Like that was like the last part of the whole drive chain mechanism. And the last part of it that connects to the planter boxes, I did not have engaged to that. And I'm like, shit, now I have to go through and replant these rows. And luckily my neighbor had come over because um, he was curious to see how the thing thing worked and he'd never done anything like it either. And so I asked him, I said, hey, will you do me a favor? And if you're uncomfortable with this, you can say no. But I said, can you just sit on the back of the planter as I'm planting and look in the tubs to make sure that the seeds are dropping down? Because I think everything is connected now. He's like, yeah, sure. So then I go through planting 12 rows and I stop and I go, okay, what are you seeing? And he goes, no, everything's looking good. The seeds are definitely going down. I said, okay, will you check that other box over there? Like the furthest one away from, from you. He's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Easy. We opened that tub. All the seed is still in that tub. 
And, and so I go over there and I grab the box and the box is just like set on there. I didn't even have the box clipped down. So when I engaged the last shaft over, it wasn't even grabbing a hold of the box because the box is just like floating above the planter. And I'm just like, oh my God, I just planted 12 more rows where the third row wasn't even planting anything. And I, and I couldn't go over it again because then you have too much corn in your rows and it's going to start suffocating each other. So I'm going to have 12 rows that is actually nine rows. So that's stupid. And uh, that sucks. Yeah. And so I call my buddy from Iowa who, who's, I'm kind of pig, piggybacking, piggybacking a lot off him. And, uh, and I'm just like, bro, I just had the worst first day of planting. And he goes, why is that? So I set this thing up. I got the drive chains on, got it hooked up, put all the seed in and went out planting. And he goes, let me guess, you didn't engage the boxes? I said, yes. And he goes, been there. I said, okay. And then I get them engaged. And then I go through planting and I see one tub still has all the seed left in it. And he goes, hmm, he didn't have it clipped down. I said, yep. And he goes, isn't farming fun? <laughs> I said, yep. And I'm very embarrassed. And he goes, dude, <laughs> we've all gone through it and it's your first year. So, I mean, you're still going to get a lot of sweet, sweet corn out of it. It's just going to look like complete, not that the corn is going to look like trash, but your rows are going to look like complete trash. And it's your first year. If you did it perfectly, I'd say something's wrong with you. So he goes, don't beat yourself up. Just keep on grinding away. You're doing great. And you get to learn through the process of all this. And you should be learning through the process of all this. I said, well, I appreciate that pep talk. So kids, moral of the story, don't be a dumbass. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. And then, that's probably and not the moral of the story. No, it is. I learn. felt like a dumbass for days afterwards. Did you? It's just so mad at myself because they were two easy things. And I knew to clip, clip down the boxes. <sighs> so I checked that, but that was the only one I didn't check. Cause I looked at, it, I'm like, oh, that's, that's definitely clipped because I can see it like sitting down, but it was like half an inch too high. So once I figured out those clips that I had to push, push those clips over, it was just high enough <coughs> to where that last drive shaft wouldn't engage the seed boxes uh, just, just on that box. But I'm like, these are such simple things that if I was just not rushing through and literally checking every single thing, because I just want to get out there and go. I was so geeked up and excited to go do it. So I'm like, this is the first, the first time I'm ever going to do it. I was just so pumped. And then because I was so pumped, I rushed through and just screwed it all up and made my job so much harder. Kids. Take your time. Take your time doing your chores, putting your clothes away, yeah. taking out the trash, washing the dishes. Attention to detail. Attention to detail. Washing clothes with the old school washboards. You washboards. Mm -hmm. If you have real parents, that's what that's how you wash your clothes. Yeah. I a job that should have taken me 90 minutes took me four hours. Don't rush. Mm -hmm. Trust the process. Yep. Yeah.